Welcome back. We are online again on live stream two of the seventh Serb E Global Web Conference 2019. Today is the last day of the conference. We are at the paper session about grinding, and we have been just watching one presentation from our colleagues from the Institute of Production Engineering and Machine Tools, Germany. And um, the next contribution is from the same institute. So um, since we had some um, technical problems connecting to the authors, I would like to combine both question and answer sessions um, of the first two presentations and uh, continue with both of the presenting authors after the second video presentation. So please feel free to comment and post your questions on the live chat or send them to us. Thank you. So the second presentation of this session is from, our, uh, from the Institute of Production Engineering and Machine Tools at the Leibniz University in Hannover, Germany. The authors are Berend uh, Denkana, Alexander Krödel, and Markus Hein. The paper is entitled Innovative Method for Cutting Edge Preparation with Flexible Diamond Tools. We are looking forward to your video presentation. Dear ladies and gentlemen, my name is Markus Hein and I am a research assistant at the Institute for Production Engineering and Machine Tools. I am working in our department for cutting processes and focusing my research in the field of cutting edge rounding. In the following couple of minutes, I will introduce you to a novel method for cutting edge preparation for solid cover tools. For this method, it is essential to know the basic mechanism and influencing factors using the new preparation method. The cutting edge preparation is a process step into a manufacture. Cutting edge preparation is usually carried out after tool grinding and before coating. Irrespective of the considering cutting process, several studies have shown an increase in the performance of cutting tools with a defined cutting edge shape compared to the ground or sintered initial shape. The increase in performance was attributed to the highly higher stability of the cutting edge compared to sharp cutting edges. On the left side, you can see the differ different cutting edge preparations methods currently in use. The most widespread industrial processes are the mechanical processes of abrasive, jet machining, drag finishing and brushing. On the right, you can see the description of the cutting edge. Symmetrically rounded tools have a form factor of 1 and asymmetrically have a form factor less than or greater than 1. Let me now tell you something about my motivation and my aim. The preparation of complicated tool geometry such as complex end mills poses a particular challenge. An asymmetric rounding offers several advantages. On the one hand, better surface quality and subsurface properties can be achieved by rounding with a shape factor of less than 1 at the surface cutting edge. Furthermore, the tool life can be increased using a cutting edge rounding at the peripheral cutting edge with a form factor greater than 1. However, a reliable production of asymmetrical cutting edge geometries on these complicated cutting tools is not possible today. For this reason, a novel method for preparation of the cutting edge rounding using flexible bone diamond polishing tools is introduced. On this slide, you can see my experimental setup. All investigations were carried out on a 5-axis CNC milling center of the type ultrasonic 10 by GMG Mori, as you can see on the right. The polishing tools used are provided by the company Ernst Vetter GmbH. They have a diameter of 40 mm and consist of flexible plastic lamellas with embedded diamond grains. <clears throat> the grain size is approximate 20 micrometer. The polishing tools are generally used in a medical technology for processing ceramic dental implants. Uncoated carbide index and Edential inserts with the SMNR geometry and a wedge angle of 90 were used to analyze the effect of process parameters on the cutting edge rounding and to quantify tool wear. 
In the initial condition, the inserts have a sharp cutting edge with a cutting edge rounding of 5 micrometer. The cutting edge rounding as well as the roughness were carried out with the optical roughness measure measuring device Alicona and Fight Focus G5 that is based here in our institute in Hanover. <coughs> During the investigations on parallel, polish, parallel polishing, five process parameters were partial varied in, the, in at least three stages in order to identify the influence on the cutting edge rounding. In addition, two repetitions were carried out per parameter set. The cutting speed, the feed velocity, the tilt angel, the pit angel and the death of cut were investigated. The target parameters for all processes are the achievable rounding on the flank and on the wake face, described by the cutting edge section as alpha and as gamma as well as the form factor kappa. The tilt angel here in the middle top describes the inclination of the polishing tool to flank or wake face during power rail polishing. Using a tilt angel of zero degree, a flank and wake face are machined equally. At a tilt angel of um, greater than zero, the machined surface is enlarged on the flank face and reduced on the wake face. The opposite is true for a tilt angel less than zero degree. However, due to a possible collision between the workpiece and the collapsed chuck of the tool, only a tilt angel um, greater than zero could be investigated with the described test setup. The pit angel defines the inclination of the polishing tool in relation to the horizontal alignment of the tool shank. Due to possible collisions between collet chuck and workpiece, only a positive pitch angle could be considered in the investigations. The depth of cut describes the ideal geometric maximum overlap of the workpiece and the polishing tool without elastic effects. Initially, a cutting speed of 440 a meter per minute, a feed velocity of 60 mm per minute, a depth of cut of 0.3 mm, a tilt angle of 0 degree and a pitch angle of 0 degree were selected as process parameters. For the initial values, a rounding with um, as alpha and as gamma, 60 to 120 micrometer could be created during power layer polishing. Due to the direction of rotation of the polishing tool, the lamella pairs first hit the wake face of the indexal insert, polish it and the wake face side, and then hit the flank face, where the polishing time is shorter. This generates more material removal on the wake face and the cutting edge section as gamma is larger. Thus, an asymmetrical rounding with a form factor of 2 with a high repeatability, repeatability as you can see here can be created. This slide shows the effects of the pulsar settings, feed velocity and depth of cut on the rounding result. On the left side, the influence of the feed velocity on the cutting edge rounding during power layer polishing is shown. Here with a higher feed velocity, the produced rounding and thus both cutting edge sections as alpha and as gamma are reduced on the form factor increases and the form factor increases. The increase in the form factor results from a more pronounced decrease in removal on the flank phase and on the wake phase. If the feed velocity is reduced, the rounding increases and the form factor decreases slightly. According to the conventional removal hypothesis, material removal during polishing is achieved in the form of an abrasive process in which the usually harder abrasive polishing grain penetrates into the softer workpiece surface and removes material similar to a machining process. Increasing the depth of cut results in a larger rounding and decreasing the depth of cut results in a smaller cutting edge rounding, shown on the right side. An increase of the depth of cut results in a larger area of the lamella pairs being in contact with the workpiece surface and as a result more diamond grains can be generated 
and ablation. The form factor remains almost constant with a slightly decreasing tendency with an increased depth of cut. Yes, for the pitch angle and the tilt angle, similar influences could be identified, as shown on the slide. When the angles are increased, the two cutting edge sections decreases to a certain point. Subsequently, the cutting edge section is alpha rises and as gamma falls slightly. The contact surface between the lamella pairs and the workpiece is first reduced in size on both cutting edge sections. Afterwards, the increase in the angel shifts the contact surface of the lamella pairs to the side of the strength face whereby the cutting edge section is alpha rises again. The form factor decreases when the angels are increases and the approaches the value 1. The investigation shown show that a symmetrical cutting edge rounding can be created with a pitch angel of 45 degree or a tilt angel of 45 degree. Here you can see images of two prepared cutting edges that were taken using a scanning electron microscope to show the quality of the preparation process. The preparation was carried out on the one hand with a brushing process and on the other hand with a diamond polishing tool presented. With the both processes a cutting edge rounding of S alpha S gamma 60 micrometer was created. It becomes clear that the shape of the prepared cutting edge with the polishing tools corresponds to a circle shape. On the other hand, the brushing process with the used process parameters produced a cutting edge shape that resembles a mixture between rounding and chamfer. The resulting edge quality determined by the roughness value R is higher with the diamond polishing tools in comparison with the brushing process. In order to determine, to determine the productivity of the diamond tool, the tool life of the polishing tools was investigated. The process parameters were kept constant and the wear behavior of the tools was analyzed. In total, the examination covered 50 months. A light microscope was used to record the conditions of the diamond tools. Dark discolorations are visible on the polisher tips as you can see on the slide. This become more pronounced during a longer period of use. During polishing, the smallest carbide particles are abrasively removed from the indexable inset and are deposed, deposited on the polishing tips in the form of carbide dust. At the beginning of the investigation, fibers and material detachments can also be seen on the polishing tips. If the diamond tools are used for a longer period of time, the polisher tips will also show a wear surface, AV. The surface increases with a, with a further trial. Let me summarize the results. First of all, with power layer polishing, it is possible to produce both asymmetrical and symmetrical cutting edge roundings with a high repeatability. During power, power layer polishing, all examined process parameters have a strong influence on the cutting edge rounding. In addition, the wear of the polishing tools can be characterized by the surface AV at the polishing tips. At the, polishing tips. the surface increases with further trials. Furthermore, a cutting edge length of 250 mm can be rounded with the same diamond tool without any major change in the preparation result. In the near future, a new tool concept will be investigated. Yeah, this tool has interlaced, interlaced lamellas.
Welcome back and thank you very much for sending us your presentation. So uh, as announced before, we have online now um, the authors and um, presenting author uh, Tobias Gatzke as well as Marco Sein from both presentations this morning. Um, the papers are entitled from the first presentation uh, process design of the patterning process of profile grinding wheels and from the second presentation innovative method for cutting edge preparation with flexible diamond tools. So uh, we have already posted um, the questions regarding the first paper on the live chat and our corresponding author has uh, started to answer it. The other question uh, we received for the second presentation is um, which came just in during the video present the last video presentation. I'm just reading this one to you and hope that you can um, hear us. Um, or I'm gonna also send it through uh, the chat function to you. So the question is, can you highlight the changing process of the tool by raising up the trial number? We are listening to your answer. So we are about your project uh, to fund this contribution? Hello, Marcus, can you hear us? I can hear you. Good. Um, we have also learned that you have funded the work you just presented through a, a funding of the Federal Minister of Economics Affairs and Energy. Could you uh, please highlight the importance um, of the project or of the, this contribution within the project? Uh, I think I'm going uh, to get the question. Can you repeat, please? Okay, I'm, I'm going to send the yeah. question to Can you. Can you repeat the question, please? Yes, 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 yes. Sure. I'm looking um, to the left side. Maybe if you m mute your sound on YouTube. Um, yeah, it is uh, very important that you have a better process in the future to um, make work um, a centimetric around it for cutting tool. And at the moment, there is no possibility to um, make it work in the industry. So um, that's a big Could you please also detail your challenges for transferring the approach to the industry? Marcus, can you hear us? So you have the body. 
for your explanation. We are going to follow your future uh, work and hope to see you um, soon. Next question is going to be to Tobias. Could you please also answer the same question for your uh, contribution? <coughs> yes, please. We are listening to you. Uh, the same questions uh, that you uh, <laughs> Yes, please. Yeah. Uh, so, um, my question was, uh, my, my subject was also funded um, from the economy um, industry. And um, it's also uh, quite important for the industry uh, that they have um, possibilities to improve the um, productivity of conventional. Um, grinding tools, um, and this is a very simple uh, approach. Um, usually, uh, some stressing um, tools are common in uh, grinding machines, so the technology is quite known and it can be easily applied. Um, but the use parameters are quite different, so uh, all in all, it's um, a new approach with uh, somehow known tools. So it's easy to apply, and um, that is why it's uh, funded and also um, of quite quite interest uh, to the industry. Um, However, uh, the the challenge for transferring it to the industry is um, that the um, at least one approach um, or one one challenge is uh, that this model. Um, my analytical model uh, is applied in um, different scenarios. So each time you can enter some parameters and uh, this model will give you in a quite easy way um, as an output how you should pattern uh, the grinding wheel. Um, but the huge challenge is that this um, in the future should be automated uh, so that the machine itself knows how to pass on the grinding wheel. Um, and uh, this is one of the huge challenges when transferring it to grinding machines um, or in the end to, to the industry. Thank you for your And there are some, some other um, challenges such as the machine room um, and the question where you can apply a second uh, uh, a a second dressing spender and such, um, but uh, in the end the major challenge is uh, really the automation of that process. Thank you a lot for your answers. One remaining question to both of you is, since uh, one of the recent topics of the CRP community is the Im environmental impact of uh, processes and um, as well as grinding, could you uh, comment on it, how you measure the environmental impact or the change from an environmental perspective through your approaches? I'm um, sorry, I didn't get the last part of the question. Okay, uh, I'm going to also type it to you that you can... Um, what is the environmental impact of your approaches? What is, the, my, uh, what is the impact of my process on the grinding uh, yes. process? Yeah. Um, the, the impact is, uh, the, the, first of all, the topography of the grinding wheel change. Um, that means that um, you, you have a different uh, number of cutting edges and so on in the, in the surface or on the surface of the grinding wheel. Um, that leads to, to a different load uh, on, on the grains, um, but also a different load on the workpiece. Um, you increase, uh, for example, the um, coolant volume also, and both in, in, when you have these both effects, you increase coolant and you uh, decrease the number of cutting edges, that leads to a, a reduced thermal uh, load on the workpiece um, and that means that the um, grinding burn and 
Tobias. Also, thanks a lot um, for, for connecting to us through phone, uh, voice call, and uh, looking forward to, you so, so, to see you soon. Bye. I'm, I'm just saying goodbye. Thanks also for your feedback.